sorry, I've got you. You're okay. A video. <laughs> you're a video. Chocolate teeth and all. No, you're looking. You're looking good. But so you were saying about the Urban Strategy account, how it came in, how it came into existence. Sure. So we were founded 25 years ago by a woman, a woman named Angela Clover Blackwell. And the, the premise was that whenever there's a large urban change that happens, whether it's a redevelopment project or new housing or new property development happens, those, the, in those instances, especially in low-income communities of colour, there's often a very big power imbalance. And as the, the, the developers and the government have the legal staff, they have analysts and researchers and environmentalists on staff to actually help them to justify why they're doing things, but the community groups generally don't have those resources. And so we're a creator to kind of level that playing field so that these low-income communities would have access to high-quality research, data skills, technology, legal aid, um, environmental engineers, whatever it might be, so that people could actually be essentially operating on the same level, so we could work with communities and build capacity, so that they could actually advocate for their own issues, for their own agendas, and actually be able to communicate with government on a, a more level playing field. And so it meant that people were actually not just helped by an outside consultant who then tried to tell them what they wanted, but we sort of guided them through a process of helping them to think about what they maybe wanted and then how to turn that into something the government would actually listen to and accept. Got you. And have you, have you seen, like, you, I mean, one of the things you were talking about was the use of data. Obviously, it's always been the case. Sure. But has that changed in the last decade? Do you feel that the fact, you know, be, be IT but also open data is leveling the playing field more rapidly? Or that obviously there's perhaps a lack of skills. So, I mean, yeah, is open data and IT making a difference? To what communities can do. I mean, you talked about a particular analysis about truancy and other stuff that yep. you've done recently. Yeah, I think open data has a lot of potential. Um, again, the communities you work in, there's a huge digital divide. And so open data has some really interesting potential there that's a little bit untested. Right. Um, if we do lower the barrier to how easily data is available, then that'll have a big impact on communities that maybe don't have those same access to tools normally and aren't willing to dig as far. Right. So it has some potential there, but... It's not realised yet. It's definitely not realised yet. And what we've seen as our roles shift a little bit is that in the past we essentially operated as a data warehouse and a silo like government did. And we were sort of convicted a few years ago that we needed to start releasing all of our data as a non-profit because right. we held a lot of government data that was safe to release and so we started publishing the data. And, and, and do you have an open data policy now? We do. And we thought it was really important to not just give people, like a lot of the organizations like us will publish a web mapping system. And so you can look at a map online and you can see the data kind of. But you can't it. get it. Yeah. You can't get it. And so we're sort of very serious about that. We sort of, uh, Paul Ramsey sort of sort of hit home one of his talks about someone else may have a better use for your data. And so the best thing to do is your started, data will be thought of by someone else. Exactly. And so uh, I, we started. I came from me, actually. Awesome. <laughs> and so we started. When we rebuilt our new mapping systems, we actually built download functionality into everything right. so you can pull down the geography and the raw data behind it. And so we thought that was it, that was important. So that the tools are there so that communities that don't have tech geeks yeah, around them yeah. can still do some level of policy analysis and data analysis and visualization, but the people that had better skills than us even could take the data and do better things with it. So that was really important. And how much do you think there are unrealized, you know, final question on this perhaps, unrealized examples? So obviously you must have limited resources, you know. There's still limited resources. There are probably many things that one doesn't get to investigate, and that's possibly one opportunity to kind of scale up. I mean, what, how, how many? You know, you gave went into this example of truancy. Yep. How many things are there you think that are just not? You, you know, just aren't even found at the moment. That is the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, it's monumental. And that's one of the re bigger reasons why um, I started the brigade in Oakland called Open Oakland. Yeah. yeah. Is that we realised that my team was about eight or nine people, and we had certain skill sets, and there were certain things we could do, but. All these issues that we're working on are things that dozens of people across our city are interested in. And if they had access to the data, to the ideas and the context, then we could have this amazing group of people that would actually apply their ideas, their insights, their thoughts, and actually work on these same problems. And so by us releasing the data and forming a brigade to try and be more strategic in how we do these things, so it wasn't just a bunch of guys throwing up some cool app that was fun yeah. for them, but we're actually looking at issues the city was faced with, people across the community were faced with, and being able to reuse technology and reapply tools in those settings and leverage the data that we have and government has to actually solve issues. And so it's essentially a way of democratizing ideas and skills and, and basically to basically get people involved in doing actual civic projects that actually meant something instead of just really cool tech that we all love, right, but right, right. maybe it doesn't change, change the world. And so for us, the brigade is a really awesome way to do that in our after hours. <laughs> nice, okay, I'm going to hit.